Hello and welcome to the Philippines. An American has been arrested uh, for overstaying a visa and it has some other issues as well. I'm going to get into that. I'm also going to get into uh, a little bit of health issue uh, that you may have to deal with. I dealt with it, diagnosis and solution possibly. Get into that a little bit later as well. All right, jumping over to the inquire.net, a online newspaper here in the Philippines. Manila, Philippines. An American national was arrested in Cebu after repeated complaints from neighbors and barangay officials led to the discoveries that he has been overstaying in the country. Now, point number one, don't overstay. If you have overstayed, fix the problem. Get a hold of an aid, uh, immigration agent uh, agency and or the BI and find out what's going to cost you to get out of that problem. Bureau of Immigration Commissioner Jaime Morente, Jamie, said Tuesday that 67-year-old Sonny Miller was arrested in Barangay Punta, San Ramillo, municipality by operatives of the BI Intelligence Division over the weekend. And San Ramillo is uh, on the north side of north end of uh, Cebu Island. Been up and through there a number of times. According to Moranti, he issued the mission order for Miller's arrest after receiving complaints from barangay officials who accused him of causing trouble and committing acts uh, that disturbed the peace and threatened the lives of residents in the community. Lesson two. <laughs> if you've overstayed your visa, don't be causing problems and drawing attention to yourself. The complaints also allege that he has been engaging in gainful business activities without the appropriate permit and visa in blatant violation of our immigration laws, Morente added in the statement. Lesson three. If you've already broke one law by overstaying, you probably shouldn't draw attention to yourself uh, and, and break other laws, like engaging in businesses without the proper uh, visa. Immigration prosecutors then slapped Miller with deportation prior to the issue, issuance of an order for his deportation by the BI Board of Commissioners. Meanwhile, BI Intelligence Chief Manahan Jr. said in the same statement that the BI records, records prove that Miller's stay in the country had already lapsed, making him an overstaying alien who may be subjected to summary deportation. He bared that complaints against Miller of harassment and intimidation and that he alleged, allegedly occupied a land in the coastal area of the village depriving fisher fro folk from using the property to fish. Manahal also reported that barangay officials in Punta had already passed a resolution declaring him persona non grata for acts that are contrary to morals, good customs, and public policy. The American is currently detained at the BI's holding facility in Cebu, undergoing deportation proceedings. The best advice is to clear it up as soon as you realize you've overstayed. And if you've run out of money, contact relatives, friends. Don't contact me <laughs> for money to clear up the problem. Um, contact your embassy. They might be able to help you get out of the country, whatever. But uh, as, you, if, as it drags on and on and on and you think you can just fly under the radar, well, maybe you can for years some point in time, especially if you become a problem child, a problem foreigner, wherever you're living, uh, somebody's going to wonder what the deal is and, and report you. Now, this happens all over the world. I met a, uh, an American girl, lady, years ago, I think in an airport, and she had been deported and blacklisted out of Australia. She went there uh, to visit as a tourist, uh, fell in love with somebody, and uh, decided she was going to stay in Australia. And uh, they, they caught up with her, and they said, no, you're not. In fact, you're never coming back again, basically. 
Uh, so it happens all over the world, sometimes unintentionally. You just forget, you get busy. Uh, many times, millions of people overstaying intentionally, working, getting married, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. Now you will see this sign around uh, immigration offices, uh, various government offices and fixers. Fixers are people who probably have a contact within the offices and uh, might be able to fix your problem. And there is the corruption, you know, there's corruption all over the world. It's a little more open here uh, in, in the Philippines than it is in many nations, but I've, even in the U.S. I've, uh, I have witnessed and been asked to participate in some of that type of stuff. Uh, not related to immigration or licenses, but other things in business. Anyway, in fact, I was I was approached early on in my travels back in 2015. I was I was in a I think I was in a Jollibee, and there was some girl. I noticed her a couple times just hanging out outside the entrance. And when I finished eating, and I walked outside, and she kind of smiled. I, I I smiled back, I think, and went on my way walking. All of a sudden, she's by my side and grabs my arm, and uh, <laughs> she says, "I'm hungry." And so I took her back into Jollibee and bought her bought her meal. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, she told me, um, you know, I act actually I saw her a few times. It's, it's like she she wasn't following me around, but I ran into her, incidentally, many many times, different places, and I'd always give her some money for her meal, buy her meal, whatever. And, and uh, she said, "Well, you you need me. I can I can." take care of your immigration stuff. I can take care of this and that I can, and, and get it done much cheaper than what you can done be, uh, get done yourself. And which really uh, threw a red flag up. And uh, you know I didn't want to get involved in any, any part of that. But um, she claimed to have contacts. And uh, there again, uh, I've got a friend, another story. I've got a friend a few years ago, gave his passport to a uh, somebody he thought was le legitimately work uh, with immigration and he didn't get his passport back for a long time. He asked for a couple times. In the meantime, he had overstayed his visa and this gentleman was able to, he'd overstayed his 36 months and well he didn't know that because uh, somebody else had his, had his passport. And when he finally got it back, it, it had an extension stamped in it. Well, how did that happen? You got an extension when you legally aren't, aren't able to get an extension, apparently, un unless there's some rules that I don't know about. And anyway, that created a problem. Since then, he has paid, uh, paid a fine, got his, got his uh, passport up, up uh, to speed, his visas, and he's in the process of uh, looking at the SRRV right now, retirement visa. So it really is up to you to know when your when your visa is up and what you need to do uh, to renew it and get, get it renewed on a timely basis. I use uh, JR, JRC Visa Consultants and uh, Immigration Services here in Cebu City. They've got offices. Um, in Duangate, I've got a couple people working in Manila. They don't have an office yet. Um, over in uh, Panglao Island on Bohol, and also over on Moal Bol, uh, over on the west side, a popular diving snorkeling area over on the west side of Cebu Island. And I have done uh, many interviews with uh, JR, uh, so you can check out those videos as well. I've got over a thousand videos, uh, condo videos, what do they rent for, what do they sell for, what do they look like inside, uh, cost of living videos, travel videos and such, so check out those. The second topic is uh, health related, uh, stomach issues, cramps, stomach cramps, uh, diarrhea, oh the best topic everybody likes to talk about. Um, anyway, a couple of weeks ago I guess I, I was at SNR, bought some Kirkland brand uh, mixed nuts, they're, they're pretty good, and uh, I, g I generally have some walnuts, pecans, uh, Brazil nuts, uh, different things, pistachios, 
uh, that I eat uh, just just a f very few uh, many days I will. But anyway, these these mixed nuts, uh, something about them, they were they were a bit addictive, and I I was opening the jar and chewing on a little bit over the course of a couple of days, and nuts, peanuts and cashews in particular, um, which I, I don't think are, are true nuts, but uh, tend to give me, if I eat too much, um, I have a problem digesting them, and they go right through me. And I thought, well, that's, that, that's the problem. I eat too many nuts, so I quit, e quit eating those uh, mixed nuts for a few days. Uh, but my issue continued. In fact, it got worse. I started getting uh, stomach cramps, and I thought, yeah, that's not right. Maybe I ate some bad food, and I tried to narrow it down to, to what that could have been. And I, I had some, sh I don't generally eat much seafood. I'm really pretty careful. But uh, I had had one shrimp. I tried one shrimp, didn't like it, just ate a little bit of it. And I thought, well, maybe it was that. I don't know. But, you know, uh, food poisoning usually goes through you fairly rapidly unless it's severe. And anyway, another day or two, and it got worse in my cramps. And I would I'd get up in the middle of the night with, with cramps and go to the bathroom. And I wasn't vomiting, wasn't vomiting. I did have a, a bit of a fever a couple of days. And so I started uh, doing some research. Research I should have done much, much earlier, obviously. I found several articles online, gastroenteritis, stomach flu is what came up. Uh, came up with some symptoms and a lot of it is, is viral, virus and some of it is bacterial. And uh, my understanding is viral, not much you can do with it, usually passes within a couple of days, but mine lasted and lasted. I've had to cancel uh, a couple of meetings I had set up and a couple of events over the last uh, week and a half, uh, two weeks because of this, and they're, now I'm starting to feel better the last day or so. A couple ways to get it. Uh, contact with someone who has the virus, c contaminated food and water, that's what I think it is. Unwashed hands after going to the bathroom or changing a diaper. I haven't done that. I uh, usually wash my hands all, uh, you know, you won't find soap in most uh, CRs, bathrooms here in the Philippines. So you got to carry your own uh, here. And most of it is a virus, it says. And it seems the bacterial, there are many different strains, and different types of antibiotics work with different strains. Erythromycin, I just happened to have a few tabs, tablets of those left, and I tried that. Uh, but at the same time, I, was, I think I was getting healthy anyway, so I'm not sure if they're helping at all. I did not get dehydrated, uh, did not have a, much of a fever for very long. Uh, off and on for a couple of days, I think. Uh, my partner suggested that I go to the doctor a number of times, and... It just seemed manageable to me, and it, it seemed like uh, I just kept thinking, oh, you know, today it'll get better, today it'll get better. And it says if, if, it, if it hadn't gotten better after a week, um, that you should go to a doctor. One, one article I read said if it's not better, it doesn't pass in two or three days, you should see a doctor. So it's, it really is a, an opinion, depends upon how bad it is, I guess. Uh, but I was not uh, being dehydrated and I was eating a little bit, but not a lot. I, I did lose a kilo and a half, about three pounds, over the course of a week and a half or so. Uh, well, I'd rather not lose it that way. I hope it's not muscle, because I haven't been exercising like I normally would do two or three times a week. One thing I have learned from this is to stay up, stay stocked up on the medicine that you think you might need. And I learned that after, uh, well, during and after uh, Typhoon, Super Typhoon Odette in December, uh, as well as, uh, you know, you stock up with water, you stock up with, uh, with some food, you stock up with um, other things, cash, because the ATM machines were, were down and long lines at the banks afterwards. So you stock up with things that you might need in emergencies. And more and more, I'll do another video about this. More and more, I'm reading about uh, about the coming recessions, about shortages, and more and more things. 
I'm seeing more shortages and out of stock items uh, in in the, in the stores. You know, uh, we're not going to starve. We're not going to run make a run on the grocery store, but I am buying a little bit extra each time that I go, and uh, just little things like that can make your life so much uh, uh, safer, simpler, being prepared. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Stay safe, stay healthy. I haven't heard any more about uh, opening up and travel restrictions being decreased yet, hopefully soon, as much of the world has opened up. So see you next time.